Chapters 7 and 8 of Above Life's Turmoil. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Andrea Fiore. Above Life's Turmoil by James Allen. Chapter 7 Belief, the Basis of Action. Belief is an important word in the teachings of the wise, and it figures prominently in all religions. According to Jesus, a certain kind of belief is necessary to salvation or regeneration, and Buddha definitely thought that the right belief is the first and most essential step in the way of truth. As without right belief there cannot be right conduct, and he who has not learned how to rightly govern and conduct himself has not comprehended the simplest rudiments of truth. Belief, as laid down by the great teachers, is not belief in any particular school, philosophy, or religion, but consists of an attitude of mind determining the whole course of one's life. Belief and conduct are, therefore, inseparable, for the one determines the other. Belief is the basis of all action, and this being so, the belief which dominates the hearts or minds is shown in the life. Every man acts, thinks, lives, in exact accordance with the belief which is rooted in his innermost being. And such is the mathematical nature of the laws which govern mind, that it is absolutely impossible for anyone to believe in two opposing conditions at the same time. For instance, it is impossible to believe in justice and injustice, hatred and love, peace and strife, self and truth. Every man believes in one or the other of these opposites, never in both, and the daily conduct of every man indicates the nature of his belief. The man who believes in justice, who regards it as an eternal and indestructible principle, never boils over with righteous indignation, does not grow cynical and pessimistic over the inequalities of life, and remains calm and untroubled through all trials and difficulties. It is impossible for him to act otherwise, for he believes that justice reigns, and that, therefore, all that is called injustice is fleeting and illusory. The man who is continually getting enraged over the injustice of his fellow man, who talks about himself being badly treated, or who mourns the lack of justice in the world around him, shows by his conduct, his attitude of mind, that he believes in injustice. However he may protest to the contrary, in his inmost heart he believes that confusion and chaos are dominant in the universe, the result being that he dwells in misery and unrest, and his conduct is faulty. Again, he who believes in love, in its stability and power, practices it under all circumstances, never deviates from it, and bestows it alike upon enemies as upon friends. He who slanders and condemns, speaks disparagingly of others, or regards them with contempt, believes not in love, but hatred. All his actions prove it, even though with tongue or pen he may eulogize love. The believer in peace is known by his peaceful conduct. It is impossible for him to engage in strife. If attacked, he does not retaliate, for he has seen the majesty of the angel of peace, and can no longer pay homage to the demon of strife. The stirrer up of strife, the lover of argument, he who rushes into self-defense upon any or every provocation, believes in strife, and will have naught to do with peace. Further, he who believes in truth renounces himself. That is, he refuses to center his life in those passions, desires, and characteristics which crave only their gratification, and by thus renouncing, he becomes steadfastly fixed in truth, and lives a wise, beautiful, and blameless life. The believer in self is known by his daily indulgences, gratifications, and vanities, and by the disappointments, sorrows, and mortifications which he continually suffers. The believer in truth does not suffer, for he has given up that self which is the cause of such suffering. It will be seen by the foregoing that every man believes either in permanent and eternal principles directing human life towards law and harmony, or in the negation of those principles, 
with the resultant chaos in human affairs and in his own life. Belief in the divine principles of justice, compassion, love, constitutes the right belief laid down by Buddha as being the basis of right conduct, and also the belief unto salvation as emphasized in the Christian scriptures. For he who so believes cannot do otherwise than build his whole life upon these principles, and so purifies his heart and perfects his life. Belief in the negation of this divine principle constitutes what is called, in all religions, unbelief, and this unbelief is manifested as a sinful, troubled, and imperfect life. Where there is right belief, there is a blameless and perfect life. Where there is false belief, there is sin, there is sorrow, the mind and life are improperly governed, and there is affliction and unrest. By their fruits ye shall know them. There is much to talk about, belief in Jesus. But what does belief in Jesus mean? It means belief in his words, in the principles he enunciated and lived, in his commandments and in his exemplary life of perfection. He who declares belief in Jesus, and yet is all the time living in his lusts and indulgences, or in the spirit of hatred and condemnation, is self-deceived. He believes not in Jesus. He believes in his own animal self. As a faithful servant delights in carrying out the commands of his master, so he who believes in Jesus carries out his commandments, and so is saved from sin. The supreme test of belief in Jesus is this, Do I keep his commandments? And this test is applied by St. John himself in the following words, He is that saint, I know him, Jesus, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whose keepeth his word, in him verily, is the word of God perfected. It will be found after a rigid and impartial analysis that belief lies at the root of all human conduct. Every thought, every act, every habit is the direct outcome of a certain fixed belief, and one's conduct alters only as one's belief are modified. What we cling to in that we believe, we practice in that we believe. When our belief in a thing ceases, we can no longer cling to or practice it. It falls away from us as a garment outworn. Men cling to their lusts and lies and vanities because they believe in them, believe there is gain and happiness in them. When they transfer their belief to the divine qualities of purity and humility, those sins trouble them no more. Men are safe from error by belief in the supremacy of truth. They are safe from sin by belief in holiness or perfection. They are safe from evil by belief in good, for every belief is manifested in the life. It is not necessary to inquire as to a man's theological belief, for that is of little or no account. For what can it avail a man to believe that Jesus died for him, or that Jesus is God, or that he is justified by faith, if he continues to live in his lower sinful nature? All that is necessary to ask is this, how does a man live? How does he conduct himself under trying circumstances? The answer to these questions will show whether a man believes in the power of evil or in the power of good. He who believes in the power of good lives a good spiritual or godly life, for goodness is God, yea, verily is God himself, and he will soon leave behind him all sins and sorrows, who believes with steadfast and unwavering faith in the supreme good. Chapter 8 The Belief That Saves It has been said that a man's whole life and character is the outcome of his belief, and also that his belief has nothing whatever to do with his life. Both statements are true. The confusion and contradiction of these two statements are only apparent and are quickly dispelled when it is remembered that there are two entirely distinct kinds of beliefs, namely, head belief and heart belief. Head, or intellectual belief, is not fundamental and causative, but it is superficial and consequent, 
and that it has no power in the molding of a man's character, the most superficial observer may easily see. Take, for instance, half a dozen men from any creed. They not only hold the same theological belief, but confess the same articles of faith in every particular, and yet their characters are vastly different. One will be just as noble as another is ignoble. One will be mild and gentle, another coarse and irascible. One will be honest, another dishonest. One will indulge certain habits which another will rigidly abjure, and so on, plainly indicating that theological belief is not an influential factor in a man's life. A man's theological belief is merely his intellectual opinion or view of the universe. God, the Bible, etc., and behind and underneath this head belief there lies, deeply rooted in his innermost being, the hidden, silent, secret belief of his heart. And it is this belief which molds and makes his whole life. It is this which makes those six men who, while as holding the same theology, are yet so vastly at variance in their deeds. They differ in the vital belief of the heart. What, then, is this heart belief? It is that which a man loves and clings to and fosters in his soul. For he thus loves and clings to and fosters in his heart, because he believes in them, and believing in them and loving them, he practices them. Thus is his life the effect of his belief. But it has no relation to the particular creed which comprises his intellectual belief. One man clings to impure and immoral things because he believes in them. Another man does not cling to them because he has ceased to believe in them. A man cannot cling to anything unless he believes in it. Belief always precedes action. Therefore, a man's deeds and life are the fruits of his belief. The priest and the Levite who passed by the injured and helpless man held no doubt very strongly to the theological doctrines of their fathers. That was their intellectual belief, but in their hearts they did not believe in mercy, and so live and acted accordingly. The Good Samaritan may or may not have had any theological beliefs, nor was it necessary that he should have, but in his heart he believed in mercy and acted accordingly. Strictly speaking, there are only two beliefs which vitally affect the life, and they are belief in good and belief in evil. He who believes in all those things that are good will love them and live in them. He who believes in those things that are impure and selfish will love them and cling to them. The tree is known by its fruits. A man's beliefs about God, Jesus, and the Bible are one thing. His life, as bound up in his actions, is another. Therefore a man's theological belief is of no consequence. But the thoughts which he harbors, his attitude of mind towards others, and his actions, these, and these only, determine and demonstrate whether the belief of a man's heart is fixed in the false or true. End of chapters 7 and 8 Recording by Andrea Fiore